The first thing to notice is from the stem of the problem, we have 1.3, which is a sample mean, x bar, and 0.5, which is a sample standard deviation, s sub x. The first assumption we'd have to make is the random assumption. We must assume the sample jumps represent a random sample of all bullfrog jumps. This assumption is not met. This sample of competing frogs likely has an average jump distance that is greater than the bullfrog population. After all, they were selected to compete in a jumping competition. They're not just the average bullfrog. The next condition is the independent condition. We must assume that each jump is independent of the other jumps. This assumption might be met, but we really don't have any information about whether one jump is affecting the distances of the other jumps. The last assumption is the normal condition. We must assume the population has a normal distribution, or the sample is large enough for the sampling distribution to be normal enough for T procedures. So that could be a pretty small sample because T is a fairly robust procedure. But it's still something we need to check. This is likely a met assumption. As long as the scientists grabbed at least a decent sized sample of frogs, say 15, 20, or 30, or, or much more, um, we should have the normal condition met. Let's use the four-step process on this one. So state, we wish to construct a 95% confidence interval for the true mean jump distance in meters for all bullfrogs. So notice the state step has our confidence level and also our parameter of interest that we want to estimate. The plan step's easy for this one. We'll construct a one sample t interval for mean and we'll assume the conditions have been met. So normally we'd have to check all the conditions, but we did that in part A, and we made an assumption they're all met. The other thing we need in our plan step is our inference procedure. So in this case, it's a one sample t interval. For the do step, our confidence interval is going to be x bar plus or minus a margin of error, t star times s sub x over the square root of n, where x bar is 1.3 and s sub x is 0.5 from the stem of the problem. Now we need to figure out what t star is, so let's draw a t distribution. We want the critical value t star that will cut off the middle 95% of the data. But to use inverse t on the calculator, we have to tell it what area is to the left of our cutoff. So our cutoff right here actually has 97.5% of the area to the left, because it includes the middle 95% plus that tail area on the left of 2.5%. We also have to say 39 degrees freedom. That's our sample size of 40 jumps minus 1. So here's how to use inverse t on the calculator. Press second, then vars. This is your distribution menu. Go down to inverse t, and again, we're going to feed it 0.975 for an area. That's all the area to the left of this t star here, the middle area plus that one tail. Degrees freedom is 39 and we'll press enter on paste and enter again. There's our critical value, 2.0227 approximately. So now we're ready to actually construct our interval. 1.3, the sample mean, plus or minus the critical value t star times the standard error, which is s sub x divided by the square root of the sample size. But we can actually just do this on the calculator. If you press the stat button and go over to test, Scroll down to T interval. Now you can either input raw data or the stats. We have the summary statistics, not the raw data. So for X bar, put 1.3, our sample mean, S sub X, 0.5, our sample size was 40, and our confidence level is 0.95. When you press calculate, there's our confidence interval. 1.1401 to 1.4599. Now we're ready to conclude. We are 95% confident that the true mean bullfrog jump distance is between 1.1401 and 1.4599 meters. 
I hope you liked the video. And if you want to learn more about confidence intervals, check out my confidence interval playlist. It starts with the basic concepts and builds all the way up to videos like this. There's also a video at the end that shows you which type of confidence interval to use for each circumstance.